in a million years time, Niagara Falls will be completely flat. We'll be six million billion kilometers further along in our slow rotation around the center of the galaxy. The constellations will have changed unrecognizably and supernova will have exploded in the sky so bright that they will have been visible in daylight. It's extremely likely that at least one asteroid a kilometer wide will have hit the Earth, causing a mass extinction event. And in all likelihood, the human race will have completely vanished. All of our buildings and monuments destroyed by the grinding processes of the Earth. What will we have left behind? What will our legacy be? The answer is plastic. Almost every single piece of plastic that has ever been made still exists. And because of its incredible durability, much of it will continue to exist for well over a million years. To put that into context, humans have so far managed a cheeky 200,000 years of existence and only about 5,000 years of civilization. We're making about 300 million tons of plastic every single year on top of what we already have and about half of the plastic that we use we use once and then we just throw it away this is completely insane worldwide almost 300 kilograms of plastic enters the ocean every single second every piece of plastic that you throw away whether you like it or not enters a system where a horribly enormous amount of it ends up being dumped in the oceans in the LA area alone, 10,000 kilograms of plastic, like plastic cutlery, plastic bags, coffee cup lids, food containers, drifts into the ocean every single day. It's now almost impossible to walk down any beach in the entire world without finding plastic drifting ashore. Here's a friendly albatross from a beach on Midway Atoll, miles away from most of human civilization. Here is an albatross from Midway Atoll found dead. And here is the pile of plastic found in that bird's stomach. This albatross died starving hungry, unable to fit any food into its own belly. Just in case you thought otherwise, this wasn't just one unlucky albatross. There are about 1.5 million lacent albatrosses living on the Midway Atoll, and it's estimated that all of them have plastic in their stomachs. It's estimated that 90% of all seabirds globally have plastic in their stomachs. And now, just like the seabirds, almost all of us have plastic in our stomachs too. The plastic has successfully entered the food chain and now all of us are eating it all of the time. Besides happily carrying coconuts to different shorelines and bobbing underneath sea otter couples holding hands as they sleep, the oceans can be a pretty violent place and so they break up the plastics into lots of tiny, tiny little fragments. And these are really bad. So using any product with microbeads in it, which are tiny pieces of plastic, is terrible because you're directly contributing to the problem of these tiny pieces of plastic. There are places in the ocean now where these tiny pieces of plastic outnumber plankton by a factor of 26 to one. These tiny plastic particles act like magnets for terrible pollutant chemicals like phthalates, pesticides and PCBs floating around in the ocean. These are all known to cause cancers, metabolic disorders, cognitive disorders, behavioural disorders and infertility. These are the worst possible thing that a tiny little cute zooplankton could possibly eat and yet the zooplankton are eating these pieces of plastic all the time. Then other sea creatures eat the zooplankton in the soup of plastic particles that surrounds them and then other animals eat those animals and eventually because everything is connected in the world these toxic plastic particles enter our food system too and now we are eating them. Even if you don't want to believe the truth about these pollution magnet microplastics you ought to know that the plastics that we use every day in food packaging and drinks bottles have inherent problems too. Polycarbonate slowly leaches a chemical called BPA, which causes ovary damage, reduced sperm productivity, early onset puberty, a weakened immune system, behavioural changes, and is even known to cause sex reversal in frogs. About 95% of US adults test positive for BPA. PET slowly releases antimony trioxide, 
which is linked to an increased rate of cancer. Polystyrene leaches styrene, which mimics estrogen, causing sexual development problems and damaging our livers, our red blood cells, our stomachs and our kidneys. Never ever reheat food in polystyrene containers, especially if it's oily food, because the oil helps to draw the styrene out of the polystyrene. PVC is considered to be one of the most hazardous consumer products ever invented. Its manufacture unavoidably creates dioxins, which are the strongest cancer-causing chemical we have ever known, at least 10,000 times stronger than the next most cancer-causing chemical that we know of. As the plastic builds up around me, I want to talk to you about a place on our planet called the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. There are plastic patches like these all around the world, thanks to enormous ocean currents moving in big slow motion whirlpools, sweeping the plastic into the center. And thanks to these, plastic only covers about 40% of the global ocean now. Oh wait, 40% is enormous. So what are we gonna do about it? I've put a short list below this video of some things that we can start doing, but the main thrust is this. We need to stop using plastic whenever and wherever we can. It should be totally abhorrent for any cafe or supermarket to use any plastic packaging at all. It should be considered disgusting. Refuse plastic. Let's put an end to this.